The Good Friday experiment was an attempt to understand do uh, can psychedelics produce a, a mystical experience? And the Walter Pankey was a doctor and a uh, minister, and he was getting a PhD at Harvard, and he was uh, interested in in looking at the spiritual potential of MDMA, and he, he I mean of, of of psilocybin, and he worked with Timothy Leary. And they did this experiment, and they did it with a Reverend Howard Thurman. So Howard Thurman was an African American uh, minister at Boston University's Marsh Chapel, and Howard Thurman is uh, someone who deserves a lot more attention because he studied with Gandhi, he studied nonviolence with Gandhi, and then he became Martin Luther King's mentor. And Martin Luther King got a Ph.D. at Boston University, and Howard Thurman was his mentor. So Howard Thurman really helped the American civil rights movement adopt the strategy of nonviolence that he got from, mm. from Gandhi. And so Howard Thurman was very interested in this idea of uh, what are the political implications of this mystical experience. And so Walter Pankey was willing to... Um, to work with him. Um, and Howard Thurman said, I will let you come to my church, Marsh Chapel, on Good Friday, and you can do an experiment with 20 divinity students from Andover Newton Theological Seminary, and you can um, give them all a pill. And half will be psilocybin, half will be uh, placebo, which was nicotinic acid, which gives you a flush. Um, and so this was done, and it was considered to be the most eloquently designed experiment ever done on whether psychedelics could produce a mystical experience. And it uh, showed that um, nine out of the 20 people had a mystical experience, eight out of the nine had the psilocybin, and then they did some long-term, like six-month follow-ups, and they said it impacted their lives in certain ways. And then Walter Pankey um, died in a terrible scuba diving accident in 1971. Um, and so a lot was ended w with him. And then the, the 1970 and the backlash against psychedelics. So now it's in the 80s, and I'm um, undergraduate. I dropped out of college for 10 years from uh, 1972 to 1982. And, and you have to do a thesis, a senior thesis at New College. And I wanted to do psychedelic research, but psychedelic research was wiped out at the time, nothing to do. You couldn't get permission to give psychedelics. But I thought... If I go back to the Good Friday experiment, that I could do a long-term follow-up that is just asking people what happened to them when they uh, took the psilocybin and how do they think about it now. And I wouldn't have to get permission from the FDA or the DEA. I would just have to get permission from what's called an institutional review board, which our college had, just about the safety of the subject. But I'm just asking them questions. Mm -hmm. So that was the only way that I could do psychedelic research. And it was incredible because in the mystical literature, the real test of the validity of a mystical spiritual experience is called the fruits test. It means what are the consequences in your life? What are the fruits of the experience? Does it make you more peaceful, more loving? Does it make you more uh, reduce your fear of death? Does it give you a more spiritual sense of how we're connected? So that's the fruits test. And so what I you know, because people can describe all sorts of things, but what impact does it have in your life? So I figured I can do a long-term follow-up, and that's the fruits test. And Walter Pankey would have done it if he hadn't um, died, and, but nobody else was doing it. So I ended up um, trying to figure out how to do it. I went to Andover Newton uh, School, and I said um, I, n nobody knew who the subjects were in the study. So I went to the school, and I went, to, which is outside of Boston, and I said, um, I'd like to put a note in the alumni newsletter. W would you be willing to do that? Um, and they said no. They refused. They went, I said, this is the most important experiment ever in the history of mystical experiences and psychedelics with your students. And I just want to ask them questions. Would you let me put something in the alumni newsletter? And they said no. This is now 1986. And so I was like... Oh, God, I was blocked. Nobody, Tim Leary, nobody had the list. So I went to their library, and I thought, maybe I'll see some books or something on this experiment. Nothing. The thesis that was done at Harvard, nothing. They had zero about this experiment. It's like cultural amnesia. But I'm wandering through the library, and I notice that they've got some books of the alumni. And one of them had 
the list of all the students that were in school in 1962 and their names and their addresses. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is bonanza. So I photocopied it all, and then there was like 350 of them, and I wrote a postcard to every single one of them, and that led me to three of them wrote back saying that they were in the study. And over years and years, it took me, uh, but I identified 19 out of the 20. And I was able to go see them in person and interview them. And this really validated my theory of change. So my, my, my theory of change also, which, which, which you've shared a bit, is that if you have these spiritual connections, these spiritual experiences, that will make you think about the world in a different way, think about others in a different way. Yeah. And, and so what people said is that their mystical experiences really did reduce their fear of death, made them feel more connected to other people who were from different faiths, made them more ecumenical in a way, deepened their faith in their own religion. It didn't turn them away, but they saw it in a more symbolic rather than li literal way. Um, but what I discovered, so it, it validated the, the results, but what I discovered is um, a big mistake, that, that one of the persons in the study had heard the Howard Thurman, by the way, um, the audio of that service is up on our website. If you go Good Friday Experiment, you can listen to Howard Thurman's uh, Good Friday Experiment uh, speech, you know, his, his sermons and stuff from 1962. One of them was you have to tell people there's a man on the cross. You must tell people there's a man on the cross. And one of the students under the influence of psilocybin said, yeah, I got to tell people there's a man on the cross. I'm going to do it right now, and I'm going to run out of this room, and I'm going to run down the road, and I should tell the president, but the president is in D.C., so I'll tell the president of the university. And he goes running down the street, and um, Walter Pankey and uh, Houston Smith go, you know, r r running after him. <laughs> it's a busy street on Commonwealth Ave in front of the Mars Chapel, and they finally catch him, and um, he doesn't want to go inside. He's outside. He's tripping. He's, like, got this mission. And they give him a shot of Thorazine to tranquilize him, to bring him back inside. And they never mentioned that at all. Wow. Completely not mentioned it. So I had this decision when I'm going to write this follow-up study. You know, I said, I can't hide that. So I, I did report that. And what, what was going on, I think, was in the culture was this uh, exaggeration of the risks and suppression and minimization of the benefits. And I think what Timothy mm. Leary did in response was the opposite. Yes. He's like, okay, I can exaggerate the benefits. <clears throat> One dose, you're, you're enlightened, you know more than everybody else. And then he would minimize the risks. 